tell us about the process you went through with your body because you you wrote your heartbeat and things like that. So can you tell us a little bit about it? Mm, yes. It was a quickening of the body. I had learned on my travels, but mostly with my beloved, that we could channel this energy of the universe, this God energy within us. Like all of the particles of my own body was God. So I could see that, I could visualize that in every cell of my body. And we use the, the alchemy of what you call Isis alchemy today, where we would practice sacred sex to help those energies build from earth through us, through all of our bodies. And as a woman, she's the receptor and she's the, the force that gives us that space to do. Because as men, we did not have that kind of power. We needed a womb, we needed a space to, to create this beautiful energy in a way. So she helped me raise my frequency enough so I could transmute all the pain and all the degradation of the body into light. So that is how it began for us, for me and for her. And that is why we got to live so many years after what you call the, the demonstration of the crucifixion. So we, we learned how to connect our bodies and our soul in a way that her life was my life. And as long as she was alive, I knew I could be one. I could never die because we are one. So she was there and I could see her. And I knew that I was alive. She was alive. And all of you were alive. And death is a lie. We knew that within us. So I knew that I was one with everything, and mostly one with God and one with her. So she helped me a lot in that. That is another thing that did not have much of a voice. And it is understandable, but it is something that humanity is right to, to know right now. But going back to the demonstration, I had learned on Tibet how to detach my emotions and my feelings and my emotional body, what you call, and my conscience from the body. So I never felt any pain. Even though the body was getting weak because it was losing blood, and blood is the life of the body, I wasn't feeling anything, I was watching it as an observer. And when, after I was put on the cross and I knew that the time was coming where they would um, check if the body was still alive, I got into this meditate state, meditative state. And I saw myself as being everything. I was each and every person there. I was the trees, I was the houses, I was the cross itself. So I wasn't confined in the body. And my divinity was everywhere, like it always is for everyone. So I turned that knowingness within to each and every cell of my body so we could cooperate and seem what you call dead. So they took me out and I guess I spent a little too long in meditation, didn't I? <laughs> yes, I was traveling. The body was safe. So I went back with my, to my friends, my brothers in Tibet. And they taught me how to 
reanimate the body, how to go, get back into the body, because I wanted to live more, to experience more of that life. So I went back to the body. And the first person that saw me was my savior. Does he answer your question, do you know? Yes, that was beautiful, I'm mm. sorry. Um, mm. Were you the first one to release the body? No, not at all. How do you know I learned it? Yeah, yeah, mm. I meant the... <laughs> but were, was this person one of your masters or was it something that was... Yes, I met masters that had gone through the same experience in India. And I learned with them, and they showed me many things, and they explained to me the, the process. That is why I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it, because I had never done it before. I knew it was possible, I knew other people had done it, but I wasn't sure if I, if I was going to accomplish that. So it wasn't until I merged my, my essence, my energy with Maryam, that I felt more confident that it was actually possible. But I've met two masters that had done it. I met them in body, but I also met other beings like Horus. He was one that did it too. I'll just link to another question that is we have some people that we call saints here in, in this lifetime and their bodies are still intact even though it's been years and years since their death uh, is there is that something related to how they mastered maybe immortality or what yes is, yeah in a way yes they understood their divinity so profoundly that when they decided not to use that vessel anymore, they left it as it was and it is not touched by time because when you understand your divinity, you understand that you don't live within the confines of time. So that is why their, body, their bodies don't uh, rot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is why it doesn't happen because... They understand that they don't live within time. So time is going to pass on earth for people that are abiding with time. But it will not pass for them because they know they are God. So let's say they are not using that vessel anymore. And it would be very scary if they decided to come back years after. Yeah. But this is basically what I did. I left my body in a state of dominant resting mm -hmm. so we wouldn't degrade so it would be a possibility for them to come back if they wanted to yes in the same body yes that would creep you out that would be cool yeah <laughs> um, so yeah.